I've just arrived at the Automotive Innovation Centre in Melbourne and I hear the guys have got the new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series. So let's go inside and have a closer look. Luke, I thought you said you had a 300 series. This is not a 300 series. No, this is our 200 series workhorse. Had this for a few years, good vehicle, but we do have a 300 series. We got it one week ago. One week ago. Yeah, man. Picked it up from Mentone Toyota. They give us all our Toyotas. Um, I think it was one of the first ones in the country. So i um, very happy to get one of those. All right. Well, why don't we uh, take it for a spin? I wouldn't mind checking it out. Bit of a problem there, buddy. What's that? Uh, it's, here it is. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. What's this? This is no truck. This is our 300 series. One week old. I guess this is what we do. Uh, we do a lot of 3D scanning and a lot of testing. So. First thing to do is to tear it down, see what it's made of. So uh, I thought you might want to have a look at it. Yeah, when you said you've te teared it, <laughs> torn it down, that is an understatement. How many kilometres are on it? Uh, I didn't look, but it's about 20, yeah. maybe 22. So you drove it from the dealership to here and that's yep. it? Yeah, that's it. Parked it and we got to, went to town on it. So, yeah. All right. I can see the body over there. Let's yeah. Have a quick look at that first. It's same, same, but different, yeah? It looks similar, but... Yeah, look, it's, it's a lot like a 200 series. And to be perfectly honest, Love them or hate them, you can't argue with how amazingly popular and robust they were. So, are Toyota really going to make it radically different when the 200 was so good? Yes. So, yeah. look, yeah, everything about this car feels very much like a 200 series, but a step forward. And that was sold, that was on the market for what, well over a decade, wasn't it? I reckon, I think I saw the first one in 08 or 07 yeah. or something like that. So, like, you're talking 14 years. Yeah. Again, why would you stop selling them? I mean, look what happened when they stopped selling them, the prices know. went bananas. People are paying new car prices for... And this is before COVID, yeah. they were going up. A lot of aluminium on this though. Yeah. Um, I'd like to tell you which bits, but I don't have a magnet on me, but we did have trouble putting magnets. So front guards are aluminium. Uh, I think the bonnet's aluminium. Uh, and there's gonna be more, I'm not gonna tell and you that, where. Uh, powder, that's not... Um... This is developer. So when we 3D scan, obviously it looks through clear stuff. So you put that on there so I can't see through it. And generally speaking, silver is just a bit of a prick to scan, so if you put it on, it gives you really clean data. A lot going on in the engine bay? Yeah, look, <laughs> yeah. ready for an LS swap. You can put a bar in there. You could put two barrows in there, I reckon. Anyway, your people will do that. Um, look, it's designed to come off. That's the, that's the thing, yeah. right? Like when they build them in the factory, they have that bit over there and have this bit here and they put them together and they plug the bits in. They are watered air charge coolers. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, twin turbos, that's right. Yes, twin coolers, twin yeah, turbos. You've got the coolest hoist in the world there. It is a very cool hoist. Um, yeah, look, the inside looks like a car. There's probably not much point opening it. Um, I think they've done a fair bit of work on the intake um, system. There's, I'm not going to weigh in on the debate, but there's obviously been a lot of rumours about 200 series and their intakes and stuff, but um, it's a bit different to yeah. the last one. Um, so probably a lot of work there. Um, some crash structure we haven't seen before in the 200 series. Um, down the bottom through here, probably for an offset crash or something. Um, but all in all, the inside, you know, much better screen. Like our 200 has a screen that's about the size of a iPhone, now it's the size of an iPad, I guess. Um, but yeah, a lot nicer in there, but just a step up. You've taken the inside apart as well? Or? Yeah, you can open the door. Um, you have to to get to the, some of the stuff on the floor. Oh yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean about the dash. Yeah. That's a nice improvement. Yeah, so all the seats out in here um, needed to access some of the wiring. Um, and look, we've we got a scan interior anyway. So we've got people who are developing drawer systems, um, fit out kits, you know, floor mats, there's all sorts of things. So we are just scanning absolutely everything on this car anyway. So people use these scans, obviously CAD or whatever, like to develop yeah, they like have accurate models and then they can develop their parts off those scans, yeah? Correct. So like everybody designs in CAD pretty much now. Like, you know, key customers would be bull bar people, right? They, they start with like the full scan of the front. They have to because it's so integrated to the car. Um, but big calling for roof racks, for wheels, suspension already, um, you know, GBM upgrades, interior. We've got a massive list of stuff we've got to do. But the 200 series, we still get calls about data for that. So it's, it doesn't stop. So we're just going to scan absolutely everything. Well, let's get it. There's been a lot of, uh, I guess, polarization about the uh, engine in this. Let's go have a look at that. Now, like you said, you've only had it for a week, so you don't profess to know every detail. 
I didn't say that. No, no I don't. I don't. <laughs> um, look, things that, things that we know, things that have been talked about a lot, uh, it's a V6 now, not a V8. Um, they call it an F33, I believe. Um, F33A. Um, there's a lot going on, but that is very compact. Yeah, look, and it all makes sense if you start yeah, it pulling does, it apart. It? I don't think we're going to pull it apart no. this time. Um, but the massive difference here, so you've gone from the, um, what was it, four and a half litre turbo diesel V8, I think it's four and a half, um, to a 3.3 twin turbo V6. But, you know, engine tech's moved on so far. There's no doubt about it. This is a better engine. Um, biggest difference is the turbochargers are in here instead of on the side, which is what they call a hot V. So Some of the Euro um, V engines are like that, aren't they? Yeah, Mercs and stuff do that. Like some of the Audis, I think, aren't they? Mm. The turbos are there. Packaging makes sense. I mean, yeah. like, it, it comes in here. Um, you know, there's two turbos that sit under here under this heat shield. Heat management's obviously an issue. Uh, I was it's just, wondering that, yeah. I mean, look, your exhaust and turbos are already in the engine bay on every other car. It's just in a different spot, so you just got to manage it. So, and let's be honest, we know that they've done the work. So, uh, two turbos, I believe they're sequential. There's some valves and, and science going on here. Um, this is your water to, well, coolant to air, if you want to be picky in a cool. It sits, it's only pretty compact. I'm guessing it's highly efficient, though. Um, so they both come in here and then this is your throttle body and then straight out down to two plastic inlets. Love plastic inlets personally, they're light and they just work. There's no need for it to be massive. Um, two, these are your two cool lines. It's very so, short piping, that, isn't it? Well, yeah, and yeah. that's always good, right? That's yeah. what you want. And that's one of the benefits of a hot V, it just keeps it all quite compact. But um, two cool lines here run to the front and then out, out the front of the car, we've got a water pump um, sitting under the driver's side uh, wheel arch, it's about here. And then it's got those two pretty big coolers over there. So um, pretty efficient cooling um, to that's keep package. And you don't have to have airflow. So like on the 200, you've obviously got the scoop that runs through the bonnet skin and down and stuff. Interestingly, that ha I thought that would have some sort of mechanism to eject the heat out, but it doesn't, the bonnet's just normal. Um, I thought I'd expect to see some vent or something, but- Hey, a maybe there could be an aftermarket. Maybe, maybe, um, Hornet scoop. Um, but there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of airflow science going on here. So I'm not going to pretend to say that they, they stuffed up. I just, you, you know, there's just something that people are looking at is the hot V. But look, I mean, it's a compact engine. Uh, it's quite short. It's pretty small. Um, it came out quite easy. I mean, it was obviously attached to that when we took it out. The gearbox, how many gears is this one? All of them. All of them. 10, which is, I believe what they say, maximum efficient number of gears. No one will go beyond 10. Look, done all of about, you know, 18 Ks or whatever we did on the drive home and it felt fine. There's some, you know, typical Toyota stuff, like t three breathers that come right up the back of the engine here. Now that's high. Yeah. So if that's in the car, you know, these are gonna be up pretty high. So you've got a breather for, two breathers on the gearbox or one gearbox, one transfer case, and one back here, which I haven't looked at it. I'm guessing it's the, maybe it's the low range selector. I don't know, whatever the science is here. But anyway, nice breather arrangement and the front diff and the rear diff are the same. Um, classic Toyota stuff, making sure you don't um, suck water in and stuff. Um, big DPF, so you've got, so your exhaust obviously off the two turbos just sneak out through the V here. A lot of heat shielding, um, you know, straight through this V band into the um, DPF system um, down there. Um, and then, yeah, that's your, that's your full exhaust system in pieces, obviously. Complete, yep. So big resonators for the middle. Yeah, so it's big. The rear muffler there is not really that big. But yeah, I mean, and the these one's big, modern yeah. turbo diesels, they don't make a lot of noise anyway. Mm. I think we started one up off the back of a DPF and yeah. it sounded no different. <laughs> not on a Land Cruiser, but yeah. I'm sure someone will make it sound good. The size wheels, have they changed that, that it'll be the same? Uh, so we've got a GXL, so these are 18s with 265s. Uh, the GX, the low, the bottom spec has 17s with 245s. And then you go up to 20s, I think on the GR Sport, but 265s as well. So all fairly similar rolling diameter as well. We've got some spare parts here. We'll be doing testing on these. So these will be destructively tested till they fail. So this is a, a knuckle, a lower control arm and an upright. Uh, and we'll put them together and actually break them um, to help people who do GVM upgrades yeah, understand. GVM upgrades would be yeah, exactly on these where they fail. Thing, they? What else have we got? Um, big anti-roll bar, monster, the yeah, size of massive. it. I think only the GR Sport gets the uh, Acadia SS system. I should put a caveat in there that most of the stuff I'm, you know, when I say I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, this is, these are upper control arms. Aluminium knuckles are pretty cool. 
Um, massive lower control arms, classic Land Cruiser. That's all your load goes through here. So these things are absolutely enormous. They, they weigh heaps. They've got two bump stops on them on the, on the top. Yeah, they're really cool. Brakes, 354 millimeter rotors, I believe. So they're 14 millimeter bigger than the GX. Um, so the GX has, to, has the smallest brakes, only a little bit smaller. The GXL and everything else up to the second from the top are on the same brakes. And then you've got big brakes on the GR Sport. So Advix, this is the, obviously these are the brakes that are on the Yaris as well. EPB, electric park brake. So some people don't like them. Personally, I love them. I don't need to be yanking on the handle that just works. So yeah, attach the caliper. Pretty neat, compact. Um, up out of the way, I don't think I'll get damaged too much, hopefully. Um, hydraulic power steering still. Not exactly sure why. Um, e pass seems pretty good these days, but there's probably a reason for it. Front diff, um, again, all I know is what you can see there. I know it's, you know, it's aluminium. Um, the, the breather that comes out here actually runs up on the chassis. If you zoom in, it kind of lives up here. So it sits up nice and high, again, out of the way. So the, the diff sits down in this space and the breather runs up nice and high. Just all those little things, you know, as opposed to just having this sitting on top of the diff. Yeah, they, yeah. they run it further up. Yeah, that's um, a common upgrade on yeah. off-road. Got it. Oops. Um, oh, what's Luke oh, done? Oh, mate, what are you doing? What have I done? I've knocked over. Someone has meticulously arranged these wheel nuts. I think he's watching you too. <laughs> <laughs> Moving back, two fuel tanks. Two separate tanks? Yes, oh, yes, two separate tanks joined together. So it only shows us one. I, uh, okay, <laughs> I don't remember seeing two displays on the dash. I'm pretty sure it just shows us one um, with like a, a transfer pump. Um, someone can Google the fuel capacity, but it's pretty solid. 120, 140 liters, something like that. Like it's not, uh, not an 80 liter tank, that's for sure. Rear diff is a weapon, absolute weapon. I was going to so, say, that looks like a, an upgrade you could just bang in your uh, street car if you were like chasing it. some uh, quarter mile times. Like when you used to do the Hilux diff, remember that? You kept yeah. on the Hilux diff? Yep. Um, you wouldn't use this, this thing. We haven't weighed it yet, but it's, it's going to be heavy. Uh, and this is the reason why people GVM upgrade these things, because it's, they're enormous. We've got one of these on order, but we have to get permission from Toyota to buy it first. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they sent me the other bits, but they said they've got to ask Toyota to sell me this because we're going to break one of these as well. And then we're going to test it to see what material it is. But needless to say, it's going to be high tensile material and it's, it's meaty. Of these axles, meaty. You can count the splines. We'll, get, we'll cut to an air break while you count the splines. So this car, as it turned up, full tanks of fuel, uh, is 2,518 kilograms. Oh, that you scaled it? Yep. Yeah, 2,500. Always, always, mate. We weighed it without the body too. Yeah? Yeah, there's a video coming out about that. All right. Uh, it's, it's no surprise because it'll be out probably before this video. Yes. So you can, you can guess. So this, before we put everything off it, right? So engine, gearbox, fuel tanks full of fuel, all of the drive line, steering, diff, basically all of this stuff was in there. What did it weigh? Exhaust and everything. So basically missing the body, missing the, what, the, the charge air coolers. Oh, with the engine you mean? Oh, everything. Just, the, just, just, the, just the body missing. Honestly, I... <laughs> I have no Come idea. Come on, have a punt. No the one can guess the, it. The last time I tried to guess your uh, Jeep thing, I was, I, I was way off. <laughs> I, I asked two mates and both of them guessed it to the kilo, but they're smart asses. Um, 1,500 kilos exactly. Okay. So you got a ton in the body, basically, and seats and stuff like that. Glass is heavy. The, okay, the science here is not new, right? But if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, kind of, right? But what they have done is they've employed a new system of multiple different grades of steel and they've been kind enough to show us. So the majority of the chassis is out of high tensile 590 MPA steel. That's, that's some pretty good shit, mm. I mean stuff. Um, then you've got uh, extra high tensile strength steel from, so this outer patch here, so this, this press component here at, on either side at the back, um, you've got it on these sections here, these wings are hanging out here. And through the center, uh, this would be this panel here as well. And also the cross member at the front under the engine. And then you've got the super high tensile stuff, which is 980 MPA. And that's the outside pad here. So the reason they'd be running very high and ultra high tensile through there is just that bending load in the middle when you stick all of the stuff in it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> So have you scanned much in a week or has it taken you most of that time to get this apart or? Well, all the exterior scan. You sent me a photo a couple of days later and you had the body off. Yeah, yeah, so all the, all the exterior scan, bull bar stuff scan yeah. for the front end. Um, 
we've had a few people access the car. So yeah, there's, there's still plenty to do. We'll be scanning this till kind of early mid-gen. Okay. And to be back together running and we'll start testing mid-gen. Mm. Mm. So. Mint. We'll have to uh, film some more once she's back together. Mm. Can so, you go for a spin? <laughs> yeah. You can Flintstone it now, mate. Hey, I heard little bird told me that when you were pulling it apart, it was missing a bolt or something. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Hang on. Um, what, early production vehicle things? Um, you know, this was one of the very first builds. I have to check the VIN, but I think it's one of the first couple of thousand built. This panel here, so this is, this is what holds the, the front bumper on. So the front bumper sort of slides in here, it's got some retention. There's meant to be a bolt there because there's one on the passenger side, mm -hmm. but not on this side. And it means this one actually comes out quite easy. So we've got to get a bolt for that. So just, you know, little things. I mean, they're making a brand new car from scratch. It'll be new, new production lines. So they'll be getting, getting all their eyes in. You know, I mean, that car there, 2019 model 200 series, they'd been making that for, um, you know, 11 years. So they would have had a pretty dial by then. So that's a, that's a radar. Yep. So the car, this car has three, has one on the front, which does your um, advanced emergency braking or autonomous braking, whatever you want to call it. Is that the one in the badge? Yeah, that's the one that lets you text while you yep. drive. So that stops. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so th that's the one behind the badge. And then there's two at the back, one here and one on the other side. They look diagonally rear. That will give you blind spot monitoring. So the little light in your wing mirror to say, don't cut this camera off or do cut this camera off. Um, and it'll also do rear cross traffic alert when you're reversing in your driveway and someone's coming, I'll tell you. So um, these sort of things, they don't see through metal. So anyone who's making like metal rear bars, they've got to work around that. Bull bars, Toyotas are pretty easy because the bull bar kind of isn't usually, doesn't usually affect the radar because it's in the badge. But when you get a car where it's in the bumper, it's a bit of a pain. So, um, but I'll lift this up and show you a nice clean underside of a 300. Ladies and gentlemen, how nice is this hoist? That's so quiet. What? <laughs> so these are your aircon lines. So um, being a wagon, they have two aircons. They've got a unit in the back and the front, which means you can get extra cool happening really quick. Um, yeah, that's always a problem, isn't it? The, the rear aircon in a lot of cars doesn't work. Yeah. Older but the, cars. the guy at the aircon place who took the yeah. gas out for us, he said it's got, it's written under the bonnet. It's got like 700 grams of, of gas in it or 600 or something and he said like an 80 series the older cars they had like 1500 in them so he said there's such a he was surprised how little gas it had in it look this is how it bolts on there's just yeah eight bolts that's it yeah you you, you put it up and then you bolt it on so that's the, that's the mechanical bolting and then you've got an ecu here yeah so um lovely denso ecu nice mountain and you just go plug and then you've got some plugs that come under here and you go plug a couple at the back um, trans cable. You were saying that when you did the Yaris, the, all the electronics came out, came apart quite easy. Yeah, this is easier because it's kind of like a complete body and chassis. The only slightly complicated thing is just, you know, taking the, all the cooling pack off. So aircon lines, cooling lines, heat exchangers and dumping all that. So um, like the overflow tank, we had to, to dump all the coolant, but the overflow tank's got a nice little partition in it. So you can read, yeah, I knew that would happen. It happens every time. So engine is this side of the brake, engine's that side, and intercool is this side. So same coolant, it's all that Toyota pink coolant, but you've got a reservoir just yeah. for your cooling system, for your yeah, that's smart. heat exchanger. But yeah, nice clean underbody. What I also found interesting, and this is gonna be not news to some anybody, probably, or some people, but these little bump stops. So they're there to, when, when the, because obviously the body mounts that look like this have got a little bit of squish in them. So there's all different types here. And Toyota being legends, they call it two lower. So it starts at the front, one, two, three, four, there's lower, and then there's upper. And they've got two upper, it goes either side. But they've got a certain amount of give, otherwise your car rides like garbage and it feels like yep. our cars, our JDM cars <laughs> from back in the day. But they've got a bit of squish. And at extreme events, clearly, they want, to, they want to limit the amount that it moves. So this will bump into the chassis and it's just a little bump stop. And it's got little, um, little nipples on it, little, um, like a glove. I want to, I want to talk to the Toyota engineer who played with that NVH and said, that's what it needs. He kicked the, nut, the, the nuts over, the wheel nuts. Luke kicked them all over. <laughs> I ruined your film set. You might as well, um, you might as well, uh, that's it. She's all over. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna put it back together now, Stu.